Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Atlassian Enterprise Governance Webinar. This is uh, one of the webinars that XBM does in our webinar series every Thursday, 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we do a series of webinars. And I'll tell you more about some of the other webinars that we have later on this morning in our webinar. But today we are going to talk about what we call Atlassian Enterprise Governance. Now, these terms are kind of uh, uh, a little bit difficult to know what we're talking about. What is governance exactly? What is enterprise governance? Um, but what we're going to focus on this morning is the enterprise governance around Atlassian tools. So managing good governance, making sure you have good governing structures, good governing frameworks, good governing policies around the Atlassian tools in your ecosystem. The principles that we're going to be talking about this morning can be applied across any software, enterprise software product that you have. Uh, but we're going to focus specifically on, enter, uh, on enterprise governance in Atlassian ecosystem this morning. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to post them in the Q&A. Uh, we will have a few minutes at the end to answer questions and uh, have a little bit of a dialogue there. If you see anything that you're interested in or something that you think you might want to participate in or do within your company during the webinar. Uh, here's my information, steve.terelmus at xvm.com. Uh, feel free to reach out to me, send me an email, let me know what you're trying to do, and we can help you out. Um, so as a form of an introduction, uh, again, I'm Steve Terelmus. I'm the practice lead here at XVM. Um, I am a certified Atlassian uh, uh, managing consultant, and I am also SPC certified as well. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about XVM in a few minutes once we get into the webinar. Uh, but XVM has a very special relationship with Atlassian. Uh, so that may, uh, I'll explain a little bit later on, but that may answer some questions as to who XVM is and what our relationship is with Atlassian. But let's get started uh, into this idea of Atlassian enterprise governance. Now, before I get into the slides, I've got a few short slides that I want to go through. I kind of want to give you guys an idea of where we are going, right? So um, we're going to be talking about this idea of governance, which is a kind of a, uh, a high level concept, right? So we're going to start at the 10,000 foot level and we are going to work our way down to where, like I say, the rubber meets the road. But before we begin, let me kind of give you an idea of where we are going to. Uh, so that you can kind of level set yourself and have an anchor point on, uh, on where we're going over the next few minutes in this conversation. So governance tends to focus on three things, governing structures, governing frameworks, and governing policies. So let me explain to you kind of where the ground level is on all of these. So if we look at governing, uh, governing structures, so governing structures can be things like Atlassian tools that helped us to visualize the activities that are happening around governance. And I'll get into all this later on. I just kind of want to give you a quick splash in the pond of where we're going. Uh, activities around how policies are created, how products are being purchased, and visualization tools around those activities so that as a broader company, we know what's happening around our governing activities. Um, also, things like activities around workflows and things like if we're purchasing an add-on, how does that work and what's the workflow for that process? These are kind of ideas around governing framework, right? And then we also have concepts around the governing structure. How are we visualizing information to our employees around how we do governance, what governance means to, means to us, what some of the governing bodies are that exist within our governing structure, what some of the policies are that we have for our admins or for our users within the Atlassian tool. So as we think about these ideas of governing framework, governing structure, governing policies, keep this in mind. This is where we're going to go to, okay? But in order to kind of start the conversation around governance, we have to get a little theoretical uh, because when we use the term governance, not everybody really understands what that means, or more importantly, what we mean in this conversation around governance. So, you know, hold on to your hat. We'll get to the practical stuff later on the webinar, but let's talk about some theoretical stuff first, and then we'll make our way back down here. Okay, so we're talking about enterprise governance. So let's start at the 10,000 foot level, which is appropriate because my diagram here is a rocket ship. 
and we'll start talking about what are some of the ideas around your enterprise governance. Well, governance can mean a lot of things, but let's think about it specifically from the perspective of you have a company. That company has a purpose. It has a vision, mission, vision, value, right? And if you're a business company, your vision is, is, is to make money or, or to do well or to grow, right? Other types of companies may have other visions, but that idea of your company doing what it is trying to do well into the best of its ability is kind of like a rocket. And if left by itself, it can be somewhat out of control because people get excited about new ideas. People maybe spend too much money on new ideas. People spend too many resources on new ideas, right? We all kind of see this in the enterprise world around our businesses and how our businesses try to grow in a healthy, scalable way. So think about your company as this rocket. It's got a lot of power, a lot of ideas, a lot of excitement, but it's a rocket, right? It can be dangerous. So when we think about governance, we kind of think about governance as tying this rocket to a complementary and supportive control station, right? It's a framework. And so when we think about our company, we not only want to have a lot of power behind our company, but we want to do important and valuable things like aligning our strategies across the company, improving our processes, providing efficiency, right? These are all things that are going to give our rocket maximum efficiency, maximum power, maximum trajectory. So the framework that helps us do this is a governing principle that I have kind of comically put together through an acronym called ROCKET, right? So our framework of governance is going to be like a control tower that is promoting ROCKET. What is ROCKET? Well, first of all, representation. We want to make sure that when we have a governing framework, it is not isolated from the value of our company. The value of our company and the people that make our company valuable, the people that make the ROCKET grow, should be representative within the governing framework as well. The next uh, letter in our ROCKET acronym is openness. Openness is incredibly important for good governance. We want to make sure to the extent possible that the discussions in the framework, in the visualization around our governance process is open so that anyone can see it. No one should wonder from the person that's been in our company for years to the person that just joined our company. Nobody should wonder what does our company's policies and framework around governance. It should be very open and available for people to see. The third one is coordination. So depending on the type of company you have, it may be a large company, it may be a small company, there's going to need to be some conversations, some strategy around how are we going to coordinate these ideas around governance? Do we want a hub and spoke type governance system? Or is it simply fine just to have a single governing body that processes all government requests? What's the coordination function around that? But whatever it is, there needs to be coordination. And again, that coordination and how that's structured needs to be open so people understand it, people can get involved in it if they want to. Okay, knowledge. Knowledge is a very important thing, right? Knowledge is going to be some of the building blocks that are going to not only make our company do well, but also help us to understand what we need to do to be scalable. Knowledge is going to be the things that are going to help us put together new ideas. An idea is just an idea. The knowledge is going to be the building blocks that's going to make that idea a reality. So that's very important. And so we need to bring into our governing structure some of the knowledge of the organization. A great just classic example of this is you don't want a governing body that's comprised of people that have never been in Atlassian tools. Somebody in your governing body needs to have a good understanding and knowledge of how certain Atlassian tools work, right? Okay, uh, the next thing is expertise. So the great old adage is knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. So this is kind of what I mean by expertise, right? Expertise takes knowledge and hones it for things like scalability, safety, compliance, uh, coordination, working together. And so not only do we want to have people in our governing body that understand the products, we also want to have people in our governing body that has a tremendous amount of expertise in both Atlassian tools and also in our business model. What makes us great as a business? And then finally, teamwork. Teamwork is everybody working together, right? Um, this is going to be a goal of not only our governing structure and our governing framework, 
but this is a goal of Atlassian. So Atlassian is a very unique company. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but Atlassian is a publicly traded company and their stock ticker is TEAM, T-E-A-M. Their entire company is designed to promote visibility in tools for teams so that they can be, you know, maximize efficiency and be scalable and things like that. Even Atlassian itself is managed and run by two CEOs that are co-CEOs. I, I don't know of any other company that does that. And these guys have been running the company since the beginning for like almost 20 years. Um, another great area in Atlassian teamwork is how they work with partners like Expium. So the entire universe and ecosystem of Atlassian is built around teams. So if you want to manage good governance in your Atlassian, uh, in your Atlassian structures and products, you probably want to implement the concepts of teamwork as well. Okay, so this is the kind of 10,000 vision, 10,000 foot visionary level around what enterprise governance is. It's your rocket doing what it does best and your control tower helping to facilitate that rocket through representation, openness, coordination, knowledge, expertise, and teamwork. So a rocket for our enterprise governance. Let's take this down a little bit closer to practicality. When we think about governance, we first of all have to have a governance vision. You can set whatever governance vision that you want to set. Here's an idea that we've come up with, but you can build your own. Uh, we kind of see the vision for governance as being the, uh, the, the tool that is going to ensure an ongoing balance uh, between enterprise goals, that's your rocket, and enterprise growth, that's your rocket, via flexible controls, that's your control tower, right? Managed directly by the employees who best understand the purposes and values of Atlassian products across your organization. That's your knowledge, that's your expertise, that's your openness that we talked about. So two words are highlighted in that, and that's balance and employees. And if you think about the previous diagram that we were talking about, right, the control tower is critical to the operation of the rocket. Uh, and the rocket is very dependent on the control tower. The two have this balanced symbiotic relationship where without the control tower, the rocket is incredibly dangerous and risky. And without the rocket, of course, the control tower has no purpose. So there's that balance that always has to happen. So that's a very important part of our vision is that we always wanna make sure that our governance is not heavy handed, not too top down. It's gotta be balanced with what our company is trying to accomplish. And then of course, employees is the second one. So if you really wanna have a strong, healthy, uh, good governance structure in your organization, make sure that employees are involved. Uh, don't just have uh, a director, a series of directors or vice presidents or C-suite folks managing governance. Bring into the governing bodies, into the governing decisions, those employees that are on the ground level, that know what's going on, that have been in the tool and operating in the tool for a while. Understand who the employees are and how they interact with the enterprise uh, Atlassian structure, right? Who are your JIRA admins? Who are your system admins? Who are the people that need to be brought in periodically to solve a system issue versus who are the people that are constantly working on the product development and structure? Who are the people that decide what add-ons to buy, right? Have some understanding of your framework of what we like to call the who, what, and why of Atlassian tools in your organization. Then you're going to have the building pieces that you need in order to put together this really good vision. What about the, the purpose of governance? What are we really trying to accomplish here? So the governing body is going to support the creation, discussion, decision, and implementation of Atlassian products, apps, components, and configuration, right? And you can take that term Atlassian products and replace it with Microsoft products, right? It doesn't matter if you're talking about the Atlassian ecosystem, the principles and the framework and the, and the structure that we talk about today can apply to any enterprise software tool that you use. But the purpose is, is that we are going to support, and again, I've got a highlighted word there, which is support. The idea of the framework of a control tower is not to run the rocket, it's to support the rocket, right? And so we are going to support the creative juices of our company, right? The discussion, the discussions, the decisions, the implementations, all those things that are going to allow our rocket to achieve maximum velocity, maximum efficiency. All right, so we're kind of going down from the 10,000 level, maybe down to the 70, 7,500 foot level. Let's keep drilling down. What are some goals and components 
that we really want to focus on in Atlassian governance. Well, my bubbles on the outside of this diagram represent the world of things that you're going to run into that your governing body is going to need to consider, manage, think about, right? The top part here is going to be products. So you got Confluence, you got Jira, you have various portfolio products like Jira Line, Advanced Roadmaps, you have source control products like Bitbucket, uh, user management products like Access and things like that. These are the products that Atlassian gives us to do the things that we want to do in the Atlassian ecosystem. These products each need to have a, uh, an element of governance to them, right? What is the knowledge and expertise and openness that we want with JIRA? What are some of the best practices? How do we want to build our projects in JIRA? What part of our projects are standardized versus customized, right? These are all governing principles around the individual products that we use every day in the Atlassian ecosystem. Down here at the bottom is going to be that governance framework that's going to support us. So governance policies, specific uh, governing policies that we have for Atlassian products, uh, Atlassian best practices, things that we have learned over time that we want to visualize. Remember, we want to have openness in our, um, in our governing structure. So once we learn something, how do we capture that best pra practice so that it can be maximized across the other divisions in our company? Governing bodies, who are the people that make the decisions? How, how broad are those governing bodies? How many do you have? Is there one, is there three? We're gonna talk a little bit about some ideas around governing bodies later on in the webinar this morning. And lastly, in governance framework tools, how, how are you doing this? Right now I'm showing you a bunch of slides, but that's not very useful for the day-to-day -day operation of your rocket in your control tower. I showed you some, uh, some kind of teaser slides earlier in the webinar around how you can use JIRA tools and Confluence tools to actually build a robust, healthy, open, uh, active, real-time governance framework. I'll show you a little bit later on in the webinar in more detail how to do that. Um, and if you like that idea and you need some help building that out within your Atlassian products, let us know and we'd be more than happy to help you further. And then of course, how-to articles. As we uh, learn different things, we can build how-to articles. Somebody comes in uh, to JIRA, maybe we're bringing a new division into JIRA. Uh, we have already a platform where people that are uh, going to be required to structure some of the JIRA products for the new decisions and the projects and the issue types and workflows. We have some how-to articles for them to do. Uh, and and how-to articles may not be the best form, right? And maybe you want how-to videos instead. Uh, so that's going to be another element that may not live within the governing body, but will touch on the governing body. And maybe the governing body is responsible to ensure that these how-to articles or videos are actually robust and healthy and are being produced on a fairly regular basis. Okay, so we're beginning to get down to where the real work is being done in these governing structures and in actually the Atlassian tools. The four goals that we have in the center of this diagram uh, represent what we're always trying to do through this process of, of the harmony of the rocket and the control tower. First of all, scalable growth. Uh, a company that doesn't grow usually remains stagnant and is often built, bought out or just dies. So all of our companies want to grow to some extent. So we want growth that's scalable. We want something that we can actually build on, a sure foundation, as well as a, a process whereby to grow, right? So we want our governing goals to produce that as well. Scalable growth, very important. Visible control. This goes back to the openness construct. How is it that we are going to build not only a good governance framework, but a governance framework that is open and visible for everyone to see? User ownership, okay? Governing bodies that are also being managed at the grassroots level, that are being promoted and motivated at the grassroots level. Decisions that are being made on a governing body and in a governing process. Why, why can't those decisions be uh, organized, the backlog around them, what decisions we need to make by the very users that are using the tools and that are day-to-day -day interacting within the tools, right? So user ownership. And then the last one is knowledge sharing. That's so important. Uh, companies that share knowledge uh, far outperform their competitors. Uh, companies whose employees hoard knowledge wind up being, wind up stagnating, wind up having silos within their organization, wind up not being healthy, and certainly are not going to be able to develop a robust governance process. Okay, so now we're drilling down a little bit further into where the real world lives. Let's take another step down to the final three pillars that are going to structure 
where we live in the real world. First of all, the governance structure. These are the people that are responsible for that control tower. They're responsible for building the control tower, maintaining the control tower, processing all the information that comes through the control tower. This is your governance structure. These are the governing bodies, and we'll get into that in a little bit later on. Governing framework. These are the tools that you're going to use where people can interact with the governing processes, governing knowledge, and governing actions. And of course, Atlassian has a great couple of tools that are used all the time by hundreds of thousands of companies around the world for actions and knowledge, and that's Jira and Confluence. So we're going to build our framework around Jira and Confluence. I'm going to show you that a little bit later on. And then, of course, governing policies. What are the do's and the do nots, the standards versus uh, the, uh, the things that we want to have standardized versus the things we want to have customized. Uh, those are the three pillars that all of this is going to be kind of standing on. And this is kind of what is going to take us into our practical part of this discussion this morning in the webinar. But before we go any further, let me tell you a little bit about who XBM is. So XBM is a Platinum Solutions partner. There's only about 20 Platinum Solution partners in the United States. Um, XBM has been working with Atlassian for uh, over, oh, I think about five or six years at this point in time. And we've been working with Atlassian products for much further than that. We actually grew out of a, um, a full stack development software company, which still exists as our sister company. But in that company, we got to learn a little bit about Atlassian tools. Uh, our customers, our development customers were asking us for help with Atlassian tools. So we eventually partnered up with Atlassian and created a second company called XVM. And that's who we are. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about the partnership relationship with Atlassian, it's really important to understand this. Atlassian, like I mentioned before, is very much about teamwork, right? One of the things they do is they actually outsource almost all of their activity around uh, their, their products, right? So they build the products, they develop the products, they grow the products. But when it comes to licensing, implementation, consulting, customization, they almost outsource all of that. If you reach out to Atlassian and say, hey, I've got a problem with Jira, or hey, I've got, I want to start using Confluence. How do I do that? Or we want to start using Atlassian's portfolio tools. How do we go about doing that? Atlassian will literally forward your email to a partner like XBM and say, hey, XBM, we just met this great company. This is what they're doing. This is what they want to do. Can you get on a call and help them? So that's the relationship between Atlassian and partners of which XBM is a platinum solution partner. So how can we help you? Uh, licensing, if you have any licensing needs, let us know. Um, most people don't realize this, but uh, platinum solution partners like XBM can get you a better price license than buying it on the open market. So if you have, if you are licensing directly with Atlassian, you need to reach out to a platinum solution partner. I don't care if you reach out to us or reach out to another one, but please reach out to one of them. You are wasting, you are not getting the best price on your licenses if you're not working directly with a partner on licensing. So that's the first thing I want to mention. Consulting. We can do any consulting that you need. Of course, because of our sister full stack software development company, we can go even further than that into actual customized solutions. So if you know anything about Atlassian tools, it's usually database activity, knowledge activity represented by visualization tools. Well, when you, you can expand that into uh, additional software features that allow you to have a second level of visualization tools on there. In other words, if you don't like dashboards and Jira, if you don't like uh, boards, if you don't like the um, if you don't like the portals that Jira Service Management has, um, we can actually build a skin or a portal on top of that. And we've done that for a number of companies. You can find that on our website. Uh, some of the case studies we've done with that, like with Volkswagen North America. Also, training. Training is one of our core competencies. Uh, besides webinars that we do, and I'll tell you more about some of our webinars a little bit later on, uh, we do a Jira Boot Camp class, which is a three-day hands-on workshop-based uh, training class where we will get you basically ready for Jira certification. Um, all of our training is hands-on. So when you come to a class of ours, you are not just looking at slides. In fact, we have very few slides. We are getting you into an instance and you are in the instance, working in the instance, doing workshops and having one-on-one -on -one conversations with the instructor about how those workshops are affecting you and your company and things like that. Private classes, we actually dig into your instance and start doing some comparison to what we're learning in class with how you've structured things. So our training is, is some of the best out there. We even had Atlassian send uh, disgruntled customers to us 
to help them train. So if you've got any kind of training needs, please reach out to us. So consulting, licensing, training, and custom development. Let me share with you a couple of quick websites. Um, first of all, our webpage is xbm.com. And under our webpage, you can go to xbm.com events, which is right here in the events link. And you can see all of the upcoming events um, that are happening within uh, XBM. Most of these are our webinars that we have every week, uh, but go, and I, go out here and explore our website if you're interested in seeing more webinars like this. Also check out our blog. We have a lot of articles, lessons learned, experiences that we've had through the years with customers. That's really uh, uh, available to you as well. And then also I wanna point out to you our YouTube channel. XBM is very keen on empowering our customers and providing value to the open marketplace. So we have a website uh, on, our, our, we have a, a channel out on YouTube. It's just XBM, so do a Google search on XBM YouTube and you'll find our channel. Out there, you will find a series of videos. We've got a lot of videos out there. I will just tell you right now, the videos are kind of broken into two categories. One category is longer videos. These are going to be videos like webinars. For instance, this webinar will be out on the YouTube channel probably uh, within a day or two. Uh, and there's also, uh, we've done this webinar several times, so there's other versions of it out there already right now. And then the other category are short ones in uh, what we fund uh, in a fun way call our XPM expedited explanations. And that is five to 10 minute videos with quick bits of information that um, you can help out, help help you out with questions you have. One other thing I do wanna point out about our, our, our YouTube site is our playlist, particularly our governance playlist. So we, uh, XBM partnered with Atlassian in Google and did about a two year uh, stint of forums around the country around governance. We got into the stuff I'm talking about today as well as tons of other things. We had uh, people presenting from Atlassian, we had people presenting from Google, we had various presentations in the forum and then we had open panel discussions. We captured the best of those forums on this playlist here called the XBM Governance Series. And if you click on it, we have, oh, probably about 12 videos uh, that go into a lot of different things, uh, a much broader representation of ideas and concepts around enterprise governance. So if you like what you're hearing here, please come out and check out some of these videos. And of course, if you guys have questions, if you want to implement any of the things we're talking about, you know how to get a hold of us, let us know, and we'll help you out. Okay, let me continue to uh, talk about governance. Uh, before I jump into that, though, I do want to kind of give you an idea of Atlassian and what's happening in the Atlassian ecosystem over the last few years. Um, this is a little bit of a freebie. This is kind of loosely tied to governance, but, but we've been involved with Atlassian for a lot of years. So we're seeing a pattern happen with Atlassian. So if you're building out a governance framework, a governance structure, a governance team, think about this as you're building it out. So Atlassian starts about 20 years ago with a basic product that's used for issue tracking, right? It's, it was kind of like the monday.com before there was a monday.com, right? And, and, and basically they are, out, the, the leaders of Atlassian are out there looking at issue tracking tools in the ecosystem. They don't like what they see, so they build their own. This is Jira, right? Jira then grows into multiple versions, Jira Core, Jira Software, Jira Service Desk. Uh, now it's gonna be uh, Jira Service Management, Jira Business, right? So now we've got multiple versions of Jira. Well, about five years ago, Atlassian starts morphing into a bigger company, right? It is no longer the company that is just tracking documentation or content in Confluence or the, the, the team-based tools in JIRA that is now starting to take on enterprise tools management. So what was JIRA is now moving into scaled solutions like JIRA Align and, and SAFE. What was just a server product that was like a one server product that sits in your closet somewhere is now from a platform standpoint growing into a multi-server product like data center or a cloud product like Atlassian Software as a Service Cloud Offering, which now also includes full user management like crowd and access for connecting into your Active Directory, two-factor authentication and things like that, right? So Atlassian is growing. Over on the services side, what was Jira Service Desk is now growing into full enterprise soft service management with Jira Service Management Insight, 
um, a status page, Ops Genie, a full suite of tools that are used for change management, incident management, all of the ITSM, ITIL activity. So this evolution of Atlassian is what has happened over the last five years. So get ready for that if you haven't seen it already in your products. And if you want to learn more about this evolution in each of these different areas, I'm going to point you back to the events that are happening. So for example, Atlassian Governance is part of our, uh, our series around migrating to cloud, right? We have another webinar around migrating to cloud if you want to do that. Uh, if you're thinking about scaling your JIRA tools into other tools, advanced roadmaps, JIRA line, we have a series of webinars around that as well, right? So we are trying to cater our webinar series around what is actually happening with Atlassian in the ecosystem. We also periodically have forums. We're going to have a forum in October where we're actually going to have a half day work session to prep you for moving to cloud. So keep an eye on our website. There's going to be more of that as well. Also check us out on LinkedIn. Uh, updates that happen on our website and LinkedIn, you'll get a, you'll get a, a notice for that. Okay. So I did want to spend a whole lot of time talking about XBM, but I did want to let you know what's happening in the Atlassian ecosystem because this really does affect governance, right? There's going to be a big move, if you haven't seen it already, to a broader based tool system. And if you don't have a governance structure in place already, it's going to be really problematic for you because the tools that Atlassian is using are growing and expanding and people across your organization are going to want to move in and do things and, and that needs to be structured and organized. Okay, so Governance, super important. Let me get back into uh, the subject matter at hand. And what we're going to do next is we are going to actually take a look at some of the tangible rubber hits the road tools that we use in structures that we use around Atlassian governance. So we talked about the three pillars, governance structure, governance framework, governance policy. Let's show you exactly what that looks like from a day-to-day -day standpoint. First of all, let's talk about governance structure. How do we actually manage our governance structure? How do we meld the symbiosis relationship between the rocket and the control tower? The best place for that is probably going to be starting with a governance space. In Confluence, Confluence, as we like to say, is not just a documentation tool, it is a content portal. In other words, it's not just a place where you write documents, it's a place where you bring people together in knowledge sharing. And a confluence governance space is the best place to do that for two reasons. Number one, the governance space practically has all the tools you need for open knowledge sharing. And number two, it is an open space that can be shared across your entire organization. New employee comes in, new, you, you buy some new products, uh, people are working with a new division, people want to have ideas. How is this going to affect governance, the tools that we need, things like that? All of that can be open and visible. This is not like a protected instance. It's a place where people can come out and see everything. You might even want to open this up to the place where people can actually write articles with, right into the governance space. They implement a new add-on. Hey, why not have that person that implemented the add-on write a how-to article and dump it into the governance space? Okay, so the governance space is where our main information is going to happen. And a big part of the governance space is going to be the governance structure. How are we managing our governing activities? So under governance structure, we're going to have the ideas around how do we manage the governance from a people standpoint and how do we manage the governance from a tool standpoint? So let's talk real quickly um, about the people standpoint. How do you manage governance from a people standpoint, right? Now, this is an idea. You don't have to do it this way. Um, this is kind of a mid-level company governance structure. If you're a small company, you may only have one governing body. If you are a large company, you may have multiple versions of this in a hub and spoke type, gov type governance structure, right? If you need help setting this up, of course, you can come talk to us. Here's an example. We might have an Atlassian steering committee. The Atlassian steering committee is going to be, let's say we're talking maybe two to 5,000 users in Atlassian tools. The Atlassian steering committee is going to be a small group of people that are going to be a high level expertise person in the tools and probably some sort of vice president or C-suite person that can write a check for big purchases and maybe a couple of other people. The responsibility there is going to be high level governance maintenance. They're going to make um, big decisions for some of the other governing bodies. They're going to be responsible for the actual purchasing process. And they're also going to be responsible for the communication amongst and between the other governing activities that are happening, right? They want to make sure it's these guys that are going to make sure that your governance is grassroots, not top down or heavy handed, right? It's these guys that are going to make sure that the rocket and the control tower are working well together. That's the Atlassian steering committee. 
Under the Atlassian Steering Committee is going to be two separate groups. We call them the Atlassian System Admin Group and the Atlassian Product Admin Group. The System Admin Group is going to focus on all governing activities around the system. If you are on the cloud software as a service for Atlassian, you may not have a lot of people in the System Admin Group because most of that is managed by the cloud product. The Product Admin Group is going to be responsible for all the governance around the product itself. Okay, so how does that practically play out? Well, for example, let's talk about users. The system admin group is going to be the ones that are going to be responsible for bringing your Active Directory into the Atlassian tools so that users are being brought in correctly into your Atlassian tools. But the product admin group is going to be responsible for determining how projects are set up within JIRA and how users and roles are managed within JIRA projects. You see the difference between the two? The product admin group is going to have probably a smaller group of people that are constantly um, going to be involved in the governance process. The system admin group is going to be a broader group of people that are going to be targeted involved in the governance process. For example, an admin for the email or an admin for the active directory may not be involved in the governance process all the time. But if there is a governing activity around email or around AD, then they need to be involved. So the system group is going to be probably a broader group of people that are targeted to particular governance needs. And then the product admin group is going to be a narrower group of people that are focused uh, exclusively and more regularly on the governance needs. Underneath that governing body, this kind of governing tri uh, triangle, is another section here that I call product managers, product uh, product managers, project managers, development managers. The idea here is that these are the real users of the tools down here. And below that are actually the individual users, developers or executives that need reports, right? These are the real users of the tools. Be careful not to, not to separate these two groups. The people that are in here are, for the most part, the people that are representative in here. And the, I mean, obviously not everyone down here is up here, but whoever, whoever is up here is somewhat down here as well, right? You want your product managers to be in your product admin group, right? You want your JIRA admin to be in your Elastian steering committee, right? So don't forget that we really want to draw from the ground level in order to have that grassroots governance structure. If you don't do that, this is going to become very top heavy, very heavy handed, okay? So that's some ideas around the uh, functions and the people in the governance structure. Let's talk a little bit more about the governing policies. So um, actually, you know what, I'm, I'm going to drill down a little bit further because I did want to show you this. Because we're in a governance space, we not only can see the framework of it, we can actually see the actual practical structure itself. For example, this is our Atlassian Steering Committee. What is the purpose? What is the structure? Who are the members? What are some of the meetings that they've had, right? All of this is openly visible for everyone. So the purpose of the Atlassian steering committee is to make the ultimate decision, et cetera, for Atlassian products, et cetera, et cetera, right? This is the structure. The ASC members should have a chairperson who will call a meeting when necessary, right? We don't want to create any extra meetings, right? The purpose of the governance process is not to build more meetings. My gosh, we already have enough meetings every week as it is. In fact, the reason why we're building it this way and we're using the Atlassian framework for it is to have less meetings. So if you build this well and you frame this up well, then the governing team doesn't need to meet much at all because everything is being done in the tool and it's openly visible, right? So anyway, uh, these are the members, right? So you might have a senior VP of software solution, a Jira admin, a director of one of the mobile, uh, of a mobile team or something like that. Maybe you have an open position. And hey, because we're using JIRA, I'll show you this later, we actually can create a JIRA ticket for the nomination of a new Atlassian Steering Committee member. And we can track that JIRA ticket here in Confluence. We can also track our meeting notes down here. People can take a look at the recent meetings, what decisions were made and things like that, right? You're going to have a page for each of your governing bodies like that. Here's the one for the product admin group. It's going to be a broader group of people, right? And so on and so forth. So your, your governance structure is not only a framework a theoretical framework of how people know that you structure your governance, it's actual the practical, practical application of that structure as well. The teams, who's in the teams, what their meeting notes are, and things like that. Now, don't forget, this is content. This is information. Any activity that these people are doing is action. Action is not well done in Confluence. It's done in JIRA. So when we get to JIRA in a second, I'll talk about the activity there. Okay, 
While we're in compliments, though, let's talk about policies and standards. So what are our policies and standards for our Atlassian ecosystem? Again, we want to make this grassroots, right? We don't want to over-standardize processes and standards. Otherwise, people can't do what they want to accomplish. But at the same time, we don't want to give people free reign. Otherwise, we can't scale well. One of the biggest challenges we have is when we are working with teams and projects that are agile teams, and they've been working in JIRA for years, and they have kind of started to customize their own process of managing sprints, and they've got their own sprint schedule, or they've got their own way of defining what a story point is, and things like that. All of a sudden, these teams are now trying to scale in a scaled environment, and we're in this situation where that's never been governed before. It's never been standardized. In fact, this team over here uses something called a story, and this team over here uses something called a task. And so now that we're trying to scale together, we have to take the time to go back and re-standardize these things so that we can scale well. So policies around how we do things, uh, not too heavy handed, but at the same time, a good balance of standard, uh, standard versus customized. What are policies for administrators versus policies for users? Again, this is very open, so any user can come and look at this. What policies are we working on that are in progress right now? So for example, some policies for administrators might be, how do we archive products? How do we do integrations? What are uses, user access configurations, right? Maybe some policies for users are going to be, uh, What's best practices around workflows? You know, hey, you want eight to 10 sta you know, statuses in a workflow and no more than that, you know, things like that. What are some of the policies that we have for add-ons? Hey, you, you work in a small team. There's 2,000 users in our instance. You want to go build an add-on. What are the policies for bringing an add-on into the ecosystem? Because don't forget, you buy an add-on. It's not just your team that's paying for that add-on. It's all 2,000 users. So what are the policies around that, right? What are your policies around estimation, issue hierarchy, all these kinds of things? All of these can be teased out, brought to light about this. And because this is open, anybody can read it and anybody can contribute to it. So, right? So we don't want our governing body to have to spend hours and hours and hours writing these policies. Why not have users write them and then have the governing body approve it, right? It becomes a lot more efficient that way. And you're closer to the source of truth, the source of expertise when the users are actually drafting it, right? So policies and standards. You might also have a section down here for how-to articles. You could put that. Um, you could put that in a different space if you want to. But you might have hard how-to articles around add-ons. Uh, you might have how-to articles around like how to create a great filter. You know things like that, right? So you could put it in this governance space. You could put it in its own space. That's up to you. And then you might have something else down here like a meeting notes log or something like that. Um, if you are beginning to introduce the concepts of governance within your organization, you might have a whole section within this space that helps people understand what you're doing. What's our goal for governance? Why are we doing this? How far along are we in the process? You might have an advanced work, uh, an advanced roadmap that shows your progress in the governance implementation right here on the Confluent site. So all of these ideas, these kind of focus primarily on what we call our Atlassian, uh, our Atlassian structure, which is the governing bodies and the Atlassian policies or how-to articles. The third, pillar, the Atlassian structure is the actual use of the Confluence space itself. Okay, so that is going to be the structure around Confluence. Again, Confluence is all about information, knowledge sharing, openness, right? So this is all going to be your documentation and things like that. When it comes to your building out of Atlassian governance around the actions, JIRA is the tool for that, right? Not governance, not, not Confluence. You can, you can show it in Confluence, like I showed you that JIRA ticket, but you want to do it in JIRA. So let's take a quick look over at JIRA and how JIRA can be used for, um, for this activity. Okay, so first of all, let me go to, um, let me go to a, a, a high level. So this is our, trying to get back to JIRA. There we go. Okay, let me back out here. So this is, this is an example of our, um, this is an example of say our governance project. And what is a governance project? Well, a governance project is an open project that everyone can see again, where governing activities are done and viewed. So those governing activities are varied. We'll talk about what they can be in a second. But a user can come in here and they can look at things, or you can even put this on a service management model and actually have a dashboard where customers, internal users can submit governance tickets and requests, right? Things like that. 
they can see what the status is. Oh, this particular structure purchase for is, is, is under request right now. Uh, this implementation of a dev platform, we've got a prod platform, but we don't have a dev platform that's under request. Uh, maybe I need to purchase an add-on visualizer for Jira. Okay, that's in the process of gathering interest. Okay, so this is your open, uh, your open uh, platform for seeing what issues are out there. Let's take a look at what some of the actions might be in a governance project. I'm going to go back here and go into my project settings and just drill down into some of these. So what are some of the things you might have? Again, this is just an example. Um, if you have other things, great. You can have as many as you want. Uh, how about policies, right? Whenever a policy needs to be written, obviously the documentation of that policy is going to be in confluence, but the action of rewriting a new policy, having it edited, having it reviewed, having it approved, blah, blah, these are actions. And so annual policy would be a, uh, an, an issue that we have in a uh, governance project. And maybe how, how does that look? Well, maybe, a, maybe a, a policy would just look like something like this. We have a requested policy, then it goes into progress, then it's done, right? Um, go over to this side here. It's easier. Uh, oh no, it took us back. It took me down into the deep end of the well. Hold on a second. Let me back out. I did not want to go all the way down there. Here we go. Let me just do it this way here. Okay. So that's our policy workflow. How about a policy change workflow? Similar, right? So would you do draft, review it, approve, done? Again, these are just ideas. Um, what if there is a uh, what if there is a, uh, a person that needs to leave a governing body, right? Like our Atlassian product admin group, somebody leaves the company or whatever, and we need to fill a position. Why not have in the governing project a nomination workflow, right? We can go and create a ticket. Uh, the ticket goes into a nomination process. You can even use a little vote thing that's there on the ticket. Uh, and once, you know, once the ticket reaches a certain number of votes, then, you know, the person gets appointed or something like that. Or if there's multiple people there, you can have a voting period and people, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff you can do there. Um, how about if somebody wants to purchase an add-on? Uh, again, the example I gave before is, hey, somebody wants to purchase an add-on from a team. It's a great add-on, but you know they're just one member, one developer on a team of 10 people, and there's 5,000 users in the instance. You know, we got we to gotta process this through the governance process. And how much of this should the governance team be responsible for versus the person who wants the add-on? So let's take a quick look at an example of that. So for example, maybe somebody needs to request an add-on. Maybe the governing body then says, okay, great. Um, before we consider it as a governing body, you need to go do some research on it and make sure that this is actually an add-on that would be more broadly used by the team. Okay, the answer is yes. Okay, so if it's more broadly used by the team, go take that ticket that you created and have people vote on it. Maybe once there's one to 200 people that have voted on that add-on, then we allow the person to come and present to the governing body. The governing body makes a decision. Do we put this on hold? Do we not do it? Or do we purchase it? Uh, if we decide to purchase it, then after the purchase is done, we bring in the system admin group. Remember that system governing body. We need them to help configure this into the tool if necessary. And then, of course, we don't want to close this without documentation. So we go back to the guy who created it and said, we've got your add-on now. Please create some documentation and put it out on the governance, web, uh, governance uh, confluence page so that all of the other teams that are going to use this tool now know how to use it. This is a great this is really a good example of governance and active grassroots governance because so many people are involved in the process of this workflow. It can be really efficient. What if we decide to buy a product and add on like Tempo, right? And then for some reason it gets presented and we decide it's not ready and the, company, and, and the governing body puts it on hold or they close it. Because we've gone through this process, three years later, if another person decides that we should buy Tempo, they can go right into this governance project and do research and find, oh, the governing body has already discussed tempo. And then they can look right at the ticket and realize what the reason was that it was closed. Uh, not enough people needed it. Oh, well, now three years later, 10 times more people needed it than needed it now. Let's resurrect this thing and go through it again. So you now have a history of all the activities and purchases that you're doing. So this, this one is, is just a fantastic idea. Even if you don't implement a governance process, implement something like this for, for uh, things that need to be added to the uh, ecosystem. Let me close that one down. Um, a purchase workflow, you may have this, you may not. This is 
uh, if you do decide to purchase something, whether it's an add-on or services or an extra, another product of Atlassian, you might wanna have that in the governance process as well. And what if something goes wrong, right? We'll just call it a variance for right now, who knows what, but let's say something goes wrong. Maybe you wanna have a workflow and an action item for that, investigation and review, modification, right? Maybe the modification is we need to educate people. Maybe the modification is we need to update our policies. So, right, something that happens, we are now using a problem to create value to make our our process better in the future. Okay, so different things around that. So the Atlassian JIRA tool is the perfect tool for tracking and managing all the activities. Again, our goal is not to create more work. It's not to create more meetings, right? So if you do this properly, the visit, the open visibility of the tools in JIRA and Confluence help us to avoid meetings. In other words, we don't necessarily need to have a meeting to decide whether or not we're going to buy an add-on. We can just use the voting item in the JIRA ticket, the meetings, meeting avoided, right? So different things like that. Keep that in mind as you build your governance structure as well. And of course, once you have, once you have that project built out, you can actually have a dashboard here as well, and you can visualize different gadgets on here. You can call these into Confluence if you want to. If, like I mentioned before, if you actually have a roadmap around your governing process, you can embed that roadmap on a dashboard in Confluence. All kinds of things you can do. Again, the goal is to be collaborative and open in this thing so that we bring a lot of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of opportunity to it, and people are able to learn about it and to participate in it. Okay, so we have gotten all the way down to the ground level on this thing. And these are some ideas that you can do to implement this. I'm going to say one more time. Obviously, we're drinking through a fire hose this morning. I hit you with a lot of stuff in less than an hour. Um, we have implemented this with people from zero to full governance structure within a week. Uh, it is not that complicated as long as you've got the right, uh, the right buy-in in your company to do this. Um, and it can also be an ongoing thing as well, right? This can be something that we are constantly evolving and improving on and things like that as well. So I'm going to take us back to wrap things up now. Um, my last slide here is really just a, uh, hey, uh, here's who I am. Here's how to get a hold of me. Here's some upcoming webinars and classes that exist out there. Um, don't, don't, uh, don't forget to come back and check some of the other webinars we have. Um, and, uh, and, and look at those. Uh, they are, they're very valuable. All of our webinars are free um, and we do them every Thursday at the same time. And the more you uh, follow our webinars, the more you will learn about special events that we have that are coming up, forums and other activities where you can learn more things. One last thing on the, uh, on, on the webinars um, is that, uh, like I mentioned, uh, they are free. Um, and, and, and so they're, they're open for you guys to come in and, and listen to. Oh, they're also online. So after we do our webinar, we post it online. Okay, we got a few minutes left. I do wanna uh, uh, open it up for questions. Uh, if anybody has any questions around what we talked about, uh, feel free to dump it into the Q&A section. Um, I, think the, and I think on Zoom, the Q&A section may be different than the chat section, I'm not sure, but uh, just find the Q&A section and put it in there and we can answer questions for you. Um, okay, so one question that came up is, uh, where do we go from here? If this is something that we want to implement, where, how do we get started? Um, let me just answer that in a couple of ways. First of all, when I talk to people about governance, this is a, this is a broad thing, right? So if you're an admin that's frustrated with what's happening in the ecosystem, uh, maybe you started small and now you've grown and you, there's just too much going on, right? The first thing you need to do is a, a who, what, when, a who, what, where analysis. Who is in Atlassian? What do people do in the Atlassian ecosystem? And where does our Atlassian ecosystem live, right? At, that is going to help you understand whether, you know, where you are on your journey and, and whether you're ready for governance. If you started as the admin, right, and you were the only person, that who, what, where was who is me, and that's it, right? What is Jira, right? And where was maybe a cloud platform? Right now, maybe it's grown to, hey, I've got VPs that want to be involved, or at least they want to see a lot of reporting. I've got a system admin person that's constantly harassing me to try to line up a, 
uh, user provisioning and things like that, right? Your who has grown and you need to kind of document what that is. Your what may get grown too. Maybe it's not just Jira, maybe it's Jira service management, Confluence, maybe you got Bitbucket. Even your, your, your where may have grown. Maybe you now have three different instances, cloud instances that have kind of organically sprung up around the company. That's going to be a decision point. Should we bring these all into one instance to save money? Should we keep them separate? Uh, should we federate on an enterprise cloud level? All different questions. Do that analysis first, okay? And then the second thing you want to do is make sure you have some executive buy-in. This is going to be an executive-based strategy. So talk to your boss or your boss's boss, whoever sympathetic ear you can get, sell them on the fact of open visibility, sell them on the fact of, hey, this is not going to require a bunch of extra meetings. I've got it all online. Maybe even build a framework out and show it to them, right? And say, hey, this is some of the things that you can see and do. Hey, senior executive, wouldn't you want to know all the purchases that we're doing around the Atlassian ecosystem? Wouldn't you want to know that before the invoice comes on your desk, right? Try and sell them on some of that open visibility to get that executive sponsorship. And then start thinking about who are the right people to be in your governing structure. Who do I want to be in my steering committee and things like that? And that usually is the person that's open, interested in Atlassian products, and knowledgeable Atlassian products. Those three are great combinations uh, to have start to start building that team. Um, any step along the way, you need help. Come and talk to us. Uh, we actually literally implemented that entire thing I described within one week with the company. Um, it was, it started off very small, right? But we actually were able to do that. We started off by meeting with a bunch of teams. We built out the framework. Then we turned around at the end of the week and met with all the teams again and showed them the framework and implemented the framework. Um, and it was really successful. Uh, so definitely uh, uh, that's probably what I would give you as a journey to start off. Any other questions before we wrap up the webinar? Okay. Last thing I do want to call out to you again is, I, I always say this to people because I'm amazed at the number of people that don't do this. If you are licensing with someone other than a platinum partner like XBM, please at least give us a call. We can give you a quote. Uh, a lot of people license through a supplier group and they're using some sort of conglomerate supplier group. We can do better than that. Um, and, and not only that, but when you, would li when you license through a, through a, through a, through a broad-based supplier group, they don't know about the product. When you license through Expium, you can give us a call and ask us a question, right? And we can help you. Um, you'll be talking to somebody like me. So please consider that with your, li with your licensing. If you want any license quotes or, or ideas, a conversation around that, there's my email. Send me an email after the webinar, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you so much for participating in our webinar. I hope this has been helpful, and we will see you out there in the Atlassian ecosystem.